Oh, yeah, copy of Poe never disappoints. Look at it. Growing on this nice, uh, I almost want to say metamorphosis, but to be honest, I can't tell, I can't quite tell what the fuck is going on here. Just except that this black rock has these veins of, uh, almost quartz, some high silica magma going through it. Anyway. Look at that head. Again, probably a two or three hundred year old plant at least. Every areole has dropped all the rest of the spines. Oh, no, there's one with three on it still. Seems as they get old, they drop the rest of them though. Incredibly salty soil. Okay, so you know, it's super salty soil. Didn't see much going off. Seeing this little tiny aster uh, blooming down there. Eh, it's kind of nice, not too much to look at. What are we doing here? Well, what are we gonna do? We're just gonna go, you know, maybe eat some empanadas and sit in the van, you know, bored out of our minds, reading and what this shit. But we might as well just keep walking, you know? So, and I'm glad we did, because we ended up coming upon a plant we wanted to see for a long time. This is a member of the tropical mistletoe family, Lauranthaceae, and it actually lives inside this cactus. It parasitizes Eulichnia, only coming out to flower. So evidently, this is the spot to hang out and take a shit if you're a bird, too, which makes sense. You could see how they've, their feet have kind of tapped down the uh, top of that cactus. But anyway, this is a species in the genus Tristrix, which again is in the tropical mistletoe family, Lauranthaceae. Psittacanthus is a genus we get in Mexico. Uh, that's another tropical mistletoe. They're very showy. They're very beautiful. Uh, Nutsia floribunda is in the same family. That basically a giant parasitic tree in Australia. But uh, again, this one just parasitizes cactus. You know, some some do it to Echinopsis. Some do it to uh, Eulichnia, which uh, this one is. You can see it just emerging out of the aerials. Just like it's a... Uh, a cactus bud. That's uh, generally where uh, most cactus buds emerge from most cactus flowers, from the aerials. Except uh, this plant, I mean, it doesn't have, it's an obligate parasite. It doesn't even, it doesn't produce any leaves. It lives entirely within this cactus, only coming out to uh, flower. The crickets have already started. You know, it's going to be time to go back soon. It's getting kind of, uh, getting kind of chilly. I'm just, I'm sitting here trying to take pictures of this lobelia, and this guy is coming around. I think he's, I think he's having a hard time. I think we should probably put some water out for him or something. Look, he's just sitting there. Wait, yeah, you know what's going on. If I had some pepperoni, I'd give it to you just a little bit. They say you're not supposed to feed the wildlife, but you could give, you could give a fox a little bit of pepperoni. He don't mind. Certainly you can give him water, especially if it's as dry as it is. Holy fuck. You know what's going on now. You know don't pass the water. There you go. We just put a little bit of water in it thing for this guy. We're not going to mess with you. You got to drink that water. You got to drink that water. Drink that water. Yeah, there, there you go. There you go. That's right. You will fill it up. I'll, you know what? I'll just cut my goddamn sim gas, uh, excuse me, con gas water container open and leave that out for you because that's not going to be enough water for you. Oh yeah, look at his little fox tongue come out there. Look at him just, sometimes you gotta give the foxes water. You know, this little fucker's out here all on his own. You know, dry as a bone. And he, he doesn't care if you give it to him cone gas or not. You know, gasificata. Actually, maybe you're not supposed to drink carbonated water if you're a fox. I don't know, I didn't ask.